Before the break, you heard from the chairwoman of the Tea Party Express who is threatening backlash against GOP members who voted for the fiscal cliff deal. So what effect could this have on someone's political career? Joining us to talk about this, CNN political analyst Roland Martin, who leans to the left, CNN contributor and Republican strategist Anna Navarro. Uh, no? I mean, you're, you're sitting up straight now, but in some ways <laughs> leaning to the left. Roland. Nah, brother, you know, depending okay, upon the I'll issue, let's <laughs> Well, thank you. So we balance out. Hey, let's start with you, Roland, because I want to know, and I asked uh, uh, Amy Kremer this, and she didn't give me a direct answer. Will this vote be to Republicans what the uh, Iraq funding authorization vote was to the Clinton-Obama race in 2008? God, no. I mean, poor Amy. I really feel for her. She's still trying to deal with the loss of Mitt Romney to President Obama. The bottom line is this here. Uh, you have two other major issues coming up. I mean, keep in mind, the midterm election isn't until two years away. It's not like it's in November. Uh, you have the debt ceiling that's coming up. You have sequestration. And so you have opportunities for Republicans, including Tea Party back candidates, uh, to uh, establish their uh, ideas when it comes to cutting the budget. And so maybe Amy should remember that 98 percent of Americans uh, kept tax cuts in place, including a lot of people in Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, all red states. Tea Party folks might want to remember the 98% as opposed to just the 2%. Anna, what do you think about this? How big is this vote for uh, the Republicans? You know, I actually agree with Roland. I think we have a lot to do between now and the next elections. I think this is just the beginning of this negotiation. It's the beginning. It was the first battle in what is a war to tackle some of these very serious issues that we're still, you know, dealing with as a country. Issues like entitlement, like Social Security. You know, we're, these things are coming up. The debt ceiling's coming up, as Roland said, in a couple of months. And I'll tell you this. I think this threatening of backlash to Republicans by one group or another is frankly silly. I want to elect Republicans and Democrats who go to Congress and act based on their conscience, based on their principles, who study the issues and vote according to what they think is right, not because somebody or some group is threatening a backlash. I don't want somebody acting out of fear. I want somebody acting out of conviction. And that's what I would tell all my Republican uh, counterparts and you know friends in Congress. Do your job right. It's the best thing you can do towards re-election and getting a nomination. Let's talk about the, the, the rage yesterday from the interview uh, that I did with uh, <laughs> Peter King and what we saw from Governor Christie about the delaying of this Sandy aid bill. Did Speaker Boehner make a mistake here? I mean, playing, I guess, politics before getting to the, the policy. Roland. Oh, he screwed up big time. I mean, keep in mind. Uh, I, this morning, the Times Journal Morning Show, I interviewed Congresswoman Yvette Clark. There are still people in New York and New Jersey without power. Uh, folks who have mold in their homes. There are people right now, whereas you took it early, you talked about the temperatures uh, being in the low teens, as you know, 10, 20 degrees. They're freezing their butts off. And so, if you were Speaker Boehner, if you felt the Senate bill had too much pork, say it. Be upfront about it. But you don't promise to the New York and the New Jersey delegation you were going to put this up for a vote and then you don't do it. They should be angry. And I think he hurt himself big time by doing this uh, because he put partisanship over the people who are hurting in that region. So what we saw yesterday was actually the end of kind of a trend for uh, Speaker Boehner. On a, it, we saw the Plan B go down. We saw this fiscal cliff go to the very end. The, the uh, talks stall with the president and go nowhere. And then he's going to be reelected Speaker today. Is there a, an uh, alternative in the House yeah, now? I don't think there is an alternative and I think, listen, I think John Boehner actually did some pretty fancy footwork to get the fiscal cliff uh, deal passed oh, yes, through Congress did. and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. Uh, and you know, and, and, and he's going to take some flack from it. Now, what he did vis-a-vis uh, -vis New York, was it a mistake? Absolutely. Listen, buddy, when uh, Chris Christie's calling you in the middle of the night, take the call. And New, York, New Yorkers <laughs> and folks from New Jersey are a bad group of people to be taking off. You know, you do, and, and part of the problem he had also was that, you know, he was doing this to his friends. 
and they felt betrayed. Peter King is one of John Boehner's biggest and strongest allies. So you just don't treat your friends like that. I think he quickly realized it. He's tried to make amends. He has promised that there will be a vote as soon as this Friday, and then there will be another vote on the 15th of January. Buddy, you better live up to that promise, because I tell you, these folks from New Jersey and New York, they don't joke around. They will be back on. Here come uh, my wives. In, in <laughs> Roland Martin, Anna Navarro, thank you both.